The Kazakh president has authorized security forces to fire without warning as he tries to put down violent protests against his government. Kasim Jomat Tokayev just made an address to the nation declaring there will be no negotiations with those he deemed armed bandits. Dozens of protesters and security personnel have been killed in days of unrest across Central Asia, the Central Asian country rather, this week. Russian-led forces have been deployed to help the government. Moving on now, after years of icy conflict, relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran seem to be thawing now. In the latest, Iran's foreign minister, Hussein Amir Abdullahine, has told Al Jazeera TV that Tehran is now ready to restore diplomatic ties with Saudi Arabia. The minister further said that he believed in the importance of broad regional dialogue that included Saudi, Turkey and Egypt to solve the region's problems. These comments underscore how eager Iran is in restoring relations with Saudi Arabia, now which have remained frozen since 2016. Yeah. When protesters attacked Saudi embassy in Tehran after Riyadh executed a prominent Shia cleric who had allegedly meddled in Saudi's domestic affairs. Authorities in Tunisia have rescued two groups of up to 100 migrants attempting to cross the Mediterranean. A rescue ship announced that it had saved 31 migrants from a drifting wooden boat before reaching another group of migrants that managed to seek refuge in an oil platform located around 120 kilometers off the coast of Tunisia. The migrants were rescued by a French vessel, the Louis Michel, one of several ships operating in the Mediterranean. Braving the tear gas, Khartoum residents continued their months-long protests against the military regime. All across Sudan, thousands of people took to the streets on Thursday to demand a transition to civilian rule. More than two months in, Sudan's protest movement was still going strong, despite a brutal repression that's left dozens of people dead and hundreds injured. Undeterred by the deadly use of force, protesters have continued to denounce a military takeover led by General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan. The October 25th coup had derailed the country's democratic transition following the ousting of longtime dictator Omar al Bashir in 2019. North Korea said on Friday they won't be attending the Winter Olympics in Beijing. State media KCNA quoted a letter from Pyongyang's Olympic Committee and Sports Ministry, which blamed, quote, hostile forces and the global pandemic for not being able to attend. The letter also accused the US and its allies for trying to prevent the game's success. The US and several other countries, including Britain, Canada and Australia, have announced diplomats will boycott the games, but athletes are still free to travel to Beijing to compete. Yet one notable detail wasn't included. North Korea was actually suspended from the International Olympic Committee until the end of 2022. Guys, I felt the bruit. Bienvenue au 111 Prime Minister! Tonight, outrage over recent video from the skies of a scene playing out as if the world was not combating the pandemic's most contagious variant yet. Social videos circulating in Canadian media of a plane of maskless adults parting in the air. They're on a chartered flight from Montreal to Cancun. I think like all Canadians who've seen those videos, I'm extremely frustrated. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau not mincing words. And it's a slap in the face to see people putting themselves, putting their fellow citizens, putting uh, airline workers at risk. Canada's Minister of Transportation saying the government will, quote, immediately launch an investigation into these allegations.
Well, government is busy tackling undocumented entry into the country with hundreds of arrests being made daily. That's according to Home Affairs Minister Aaron Motsuledi as he was busy monitoring the Bight Bridge border. Uh, it was there with uh, South African National Defence Force soldiers uh, telling him that their counterparts in neighbouring Zimbabwe are accepting bribes to allow illegal entry here into South Africa. Another Zimbabwean national being taken inside the Home Affairs immigration truck at a roadblock just outside Mercedes. Now, this truck will be headed for the Bait Bridge border where these undocumented Zimbabwean nationals will be sent back to Zimbabwe. It talks to the issue of the loose borders between Zimbabwe and South Africa as this truck has done many rounds collecting hundreds on a daily basis of these undocumented nationals. Saza? 